Causeways would also present the Aztecs with a new way to get fresh water to Tenochtitlan. In the past, the Aztecs had transported water in canoes from the shore. But a huge boom in the city's population meant they needed a higher tech solution to keep up with demand. They wanted to use water from the springs on the mainland, and so they wanted to build an aqueduct. But the springs were under control of the dominant tribe in the region, the ruthless Tepanics. The Tepanics were the controllers or the dominators of all the valley. They had a, a, a very strong empire. So they were the lords of the valley. So the Aztecs were tributary subjects to them. As the Aztec population grew, tensions with the Tepanics began to simmer. Now the Aztecs decided to issue an ultimatum that could change the balance of power in the region. The people of Tenochtitlan not only demanded that the Tepanecs give them the water, but also demanded that they help construct the aqueduct. The Tepanec's answer was swift and brutal. The Tepanec king, Maxtala, sent assassins who murdered the reigning Aztec leader in cold blood. This was the final straw. After decades of domination, the Aztecs would finally make their move and wage war against their ruthless overlords. And they would launch a series of wildly ambitious building projects around their growing island city that would earn them a reputation as the greatest engineers of the Americas. It is 1428, and the Aztecs have declared war on their overlords, a tribe called the Tepanecs. But to defeat the Tepanecs, they would need a little help from their neighbors. The Aztecs approached the nearby city-state of Texcoco. There, a decisive leader was on the rise. His name was Netzwal Coyoto, and his domineering leadership would be instrumental in forging the Aztec Empire. With Netzwal Coyoto at their side, the Aztec underdogs would go for the jugular. They launched an all-out attack on the Tepanec capital. After a siege of more than 100 days, they broke through Tepanec defenses and slaughtered their oppressors. After capturing the Tepanec king, Maxtla, King Netzwal Coyotl personally cut out his heart and sprinkled his blood into the waters of Lake Texcoco. Suddenly, the tables had turned. That is the exact moment of the beginning of the empire and the Aztecs became the leaders of the Valley of Mexico. After conquering the Valley of Mexico, the Aztecs could now turn their attention to bringing clean water to their growing city. Remarkably, the Aztecs would independently design and build something that only a few world empires would master, the aqueduct. The aqueduct actually had two channels, each about five feet high and three feet wide. One would be cleaned and maintained, while the other was being used so the water flow was never interrupted. The twin tube aqueduct ran for three miles from the mainland to the center of the island city. In town, water streamed into public fountains and reservoirs and was distributed to the public in large clay jars or by canoe. In comparison to the Europeans, the Aztecs were a very clean people. We know that the Aztec emperor bathed twice a day. So in terms of hygiene, the Aztec people uh, was much more advanced than the Europeans. While the Aztec nobles were bathing in luxury, at this time in Europe, plague caused by unsanitary conditions was killing millions. King Netzwal Coyotl's own bath was one of the most unique in the Americas. It was fed by a sophisticated aqueduct system that also brought running water to his palace grounds. Behind me is the hill of Tezcatlipoca. And on this hill, Nezuwak Kyoto built a fantastic pleasure palace. And around this palace, a virtual botanical garden filled with all of the exotic flowers of Mesoamerica. 
Nezawal Kyoto brought water.